What's up guys, it's Data Life, Dat A Life, back with another video. If you're new to the channel, I'm a data scientist in the DC area working on a government contract and on the side, I make YouTube videos to help you all break into this amazing field. Be sure to like and subscribe, support your boy and the growing channel. Today, I'm going to be giving you all a sneak peek into what I work on during the day. So, I'm gonna do my best to show you uh, without actually showing you because I can't because the stuff I work with is for the government so it's classified, but we're gonna give it a shot. So let's get right into it. That's what YouTubers do this. The morning starts out with me waking up and taking my morning calls. I have a morning touch base where our team goes around the room and talks about what we've been working on for the past few days. We also go over any announcement that the team needs to hear. It starts off with our team leads and I typically speak in the middle of the meeting. Just enough time for me to get my laptop on, get my brain flowing and remember what I actually do for work. This meeting rarely lasts longer than 20 minutes and after that is back to sleep. Just kidding. No. Kind of. And after that it's time for breakfast. Then, after I'm nourished and fully caffeinated, I settle back into my desk and begin working. And there's about four to five things that I could be working on during the day. The first is I could be in a meeting. Self-explanatory. Some are more important than others. Some I am presenting my work, getting feedback and actively contributing, and others I'm wondering why I'm even invited to be here. Now onto the actual work, I'm on the data visualization team where I develop and maintain management tools. Which is a fancy way of saying I build dashboards. Typically the client will express that they would like to see specific data in an easy manner. So we'll work together to understand what needs to be shown, how often it needs to be updated, the layout preferences, and any other necessary features. A mock-up can usually be done pretty quickly if we're on the same page. The tools we build will be developed in Tableau and it can be connected to our database so that it'll automatically refresh. It'll take a little coordination to make sure the data is available and can be ingested into Tableau easily. It's also best to avoid data transformations in another application if possible because this just adds complications to automation. There will be many rough drafts that need to be approved by the client and revised by me. Each dashboard will be constructed and reviewed weekly until the final product is complete. After a dashboard is functional and gone through adequate testing, it typically won't need much more adjusting unless the data or data sources changes, or the client realizes they wanted something else the entire time. I also could be working on the data pipeline. Now this is a vague term thrown around a lot, but basically it just means working on transforming data as it moves from one place to the other. I don't work on any data transformations that happen in the database, that's up to our data engineering team. However, I do work on transformations when the data goes from the database to our models. Our main model is an autoencoder that is built to assess suspicious activity by employees and it relies on flags that we've created to identify different types of suspicious behavior. Some of them are pulled from the database and don't require machine learning. And just because it doesn't have machine learning doesn't mean it isn't difficult to build. The data we get comes from many different places and it often takes coordination with the data engineering team to find the relevant data. Then the actual script needs to be written that involves pulling, cleaning, merging, and restructuring the data. Other indicators are much more complicated and do involve machine learning. Some of the other indicators involve sequential pattern mining, time series forecasting, regression, and classification. A lot of the other indicators also have statistical measures that we use for outlier detection. All of these indicators are binary and fed into the risk model to generate the suspicious behavior level for each employee. Now at some point I'm going to need to hit the kitchen again and grab some lunch and catch up on all the daily sports news. But of course I don't really listen to Skip that much because he's always wrong. And then it's back to the grind. Yet another thing I could be working on is monthly reporting. Now this is something that you usually see data analysts do, but I do have some reports that I manage that were developed by me just to help the analysts. And the reason I need to manage them is because the reports are very long, they're written in R markdown, and they have thousands of lines of codes, a dozen data pools, a bunch of visualizations, a whole mess of stuff. It is something that I developed when I first started working here and now I just run weekly. They can be a pain because a few different people worked on them and when there's a problem it's not really intuitive where the problem is. 
but now it's complete and it rarely has any issues. Most of the time it's as simple as changing some dates and hitting run. And lastly, we all have our miscellaneous projects. They could be things like developing dashboards that need to be in R Shiny, not Tableau, finding out information for ad hoc requests, training people, other things like that. But this is less than 1% of the time that I spent on the contract. Hope that gives you a good sense of exactly what I do as a data scientist for the government. Comment any questions you have down below. Let me know what else you want to see. Peace, deuces, see you next time.